what's up everybody? Welcome to week 52 here on the 52 Horrific Weeks 1988. I am your host Moon 616 and thank you once again for stopping in. Alrighty, yeah peeps, it is that time. It is week 52. We are officially at the very, very end of the series. Yeah, so those remaining few films went into that randomizer, hit that random button, and we've got Pumpkinhead. Yeah. Alrighty, so yeah, we got Pumpkinhead. Uh, I was a little sketchy on if this one was going to come up or not, and of course it actually did. So that's pretty cool. Uh, first off, I just want to, you know, give a big uh, thanks to everybody that supported the series throughout this year and last year's series. Uh, it's been a pretty awesome two-year run. Um, you know, without you guys watching and stuff, there's really no point in doing them, you know. Um, but yeah, thanks for all the support. I've had a blast doing this and whatnot. And second of all, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, yeah, it's not quite New Year's here. I'm not really doing anything special for New Year's this year at all because I have to work. I'm recording this review just before I go to work, so it'll be up before New Year's my time. But uh, yeah, to everybody out there, once again, thanks for support supporting the series and I wish you a happy new year. Alrighty, so yeah, we've got Pumpkinhead for the very, very last review of the 88 series. Um, Stan Winston's directorial debut, the uh, you know special effects uh, master and whatnot and stuff. So that was pretty interesting that, you know, that Stan Winston stepped into the director chair to do a uh, film. He actually only ended up doing a couple more films after this, which was interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, of course, this one here is starring Lance Hendrickson, uh, who plays the father. And, yeah, so getting into the plot of this one, uh, basically centers around, um, you know, your main character, Lance Hendrickson, and his son. Uh, they are, you know, simple folks. Uh, they live out in the country. Uh, Lance's character, Ed Harley, um, he basically runs a, you know, kind of like a convenience store out in the country and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, one day, um, some city folk come to the country to do some, uh, some motocrossing and whatnot and stuff. Anyways, unfortunately, uh, there's an accident where uh, one of the city folk um, actually hits his son on a uh, on a motorbike and ultimately kills him. So now, you know, Ed, or Lance Hendrickson's character, is super fucking pissed off, uh, doesn't really know what to do. There is a legend of, um, you know, basically this legend of Pumpkinhead and stuff like that. Uh, but he knows about this witch that lives out in this, in this uh, basically in this abandoned kind of like run down shack, like way out in the middle of the woods and stuff like that. Now he thinks that she can actually save his child for him. Uh, so he brings his child out to see this witch. And she basically tells him that, you know, I can't really do anything for your son. Uh, but, you know, of course there is pumpkin head and whatnot. So she sends uh, Ed out to this, um, the cemetery to dig up this, uh, this basically this demon corpse. Um, she draws blood from Ed and her son. Uh, Pumpkinhead is reborn. And now the catch with Pumpkinhead is that, uh, you know, he's basically got like a bloodlust, like a blood bond towards, you know, Ed and stuff now. And uh, so once you resurrect Pumpkinhead, you know, he kind of, he works for you. And, you know, you kind of be, you have to be kind of careful what you wish for because, Pumpkinhead is there to to exact revenge, and yeah, so that's basically what happens. You know, they resurrect Pumpkinhead, and now he's out for blood and whatnot. But the thing is, though, Ed soon realizes that what he has done is not exactly good. You know, he doesn't exactly want revenge on everybody; he just wanted revenge on you know the person that actually killed his son. And the thing is, you can actually see. Like, Ed's character can see the murders and stuff through Pumpkinhead's eyes. And now it's become way too much for him. Now he needs to stop Pumpkinhead because, you know, the revenge that Ed wanted was not for everyone to die this way. So now it's basically him against Pumpkinhead and trying to stop this. Um, yeah, that's all, you know, stop the stops us right there. Um, just a fucking fantastic film. Um, now my thoughts on this one. I've always 
love this movie to death. I think the storyline is so perfect. You know, it's just a very simple premise about basically revenge. You know, um, every father in the world would want this revenge. You know, you know, this one thing I love about this film is that the way this thing plays out, uh, you get introduced to Ed and his son and you know, you can feel their bond. And you know, when his son gets killed, you really fucking feel that emotion in the film works so perfectly, you know, instantly they resurrect pumpkin head and you know, the film kind of starts from there. Um, the way it's executed is absolutely perfect. Everything about this movie is fantastic. Uh, Stan Winston's direction, really awesome. He created characters, you know, with Ed and, you know, the son you love, um, you know, the city folk, which you fucking hate, you know, for the most part, some of them don't deserve what they, you know, ultimately get and stuff. But, um, the way he develops the characters and stuff, you know, in the short period of time just works so perfect. Uh, the atmosphere in this, in this movie is just fantastic. You know, once, you know, Ed heads out to the, uh, the woods to see the witch, which in fact might even be the creepiest fucking witch ever <laughs> in a film. Such a crazy, creepy fucking witch. And the atmosphere in the building, or the, you know, the abandoned house that she's in or whatever, is just so creepy and perfect. Shot awesomely. Uh, when, you, when, she, when Ed first steps into the house, the atmosphere is just so thick because it's kind of dark and it's all lit up with candles and just the way, oh, it just executed so perfectly. But uh, the witch is just one of the creepiest characters, I think, in, you know, film history. It's just so damn creepy. Um... But I gotta say, the cemetery scene scenes in this film just oh man, so creepy and awesome, executed perfectly, great atmosphere, um, which leads me to Pumpkinhead. Now the effects in this film, of course, are done by Stan Winston's uh, you know team, and the design on Pumpkinhead has to be one of the coolest things ever because Pumpkinhead is basically what it is it's just a demon you know it's nothing less than just a demon design you know it's like kind of human like kind of alien but it's just it's just a demon design that works so perfect uh, i think the pumpkin head design is absolutely flawless it looks so good the special effects in this film are just amazing great kills combined with great atmosphere great acting um just a great tale you know of of morality basically you know it's uh be careful what you wish for. I, I That's one thing I love about this film is that it really does, it, it kind of gives it to you straight up. You know, you got to be really careful what you wish for because it might actually come true and, you know, perfect tale. <laughs> you know, I, I love the moral story of this. It, it's just fantastic. But there's really nothing bad to say about Pumpkinhead. It's just a great and perfectly executed film. Um, you know, this one runs just under 90 minutes, so it gets right into it. Perfect story, perfect execution, great atmosphere, kills, special effects, cast. Like, there's absolutely nothing bad to say about this film. Absolutely love this one. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about Pumpkinhead. I mean, just such a perfect film. Uh, if I had to rate this one, I'd probably give it about a 9.5 out of 10. It's almost perfect for me. I don't really know why I don't give it a perfect 10, but... Um, but yeah, just The Witch. Just thinking back, every time the first time I seen The Witch... When I watched this movie as a kid, she actually scared the shit out of me. Her fucking hands are so big and creepy, and the makeup on her made her look so old and decrepit. Oh, man, that scene is just so brilliant. The spiders in there, and just, oh, great atmosphere. I think it's more about the atmosphere, really, that really sells it so much. But, but yeah, Stan Winston's first film did an excellent, excellent job, man, with this... Uh, you know, can't say anything bad about this. Lance Hendrickson, just brilliant. So, um, but yeah, Screen Factory's uh, transfer on this, fantastic. Definitely a must own. Probably one of my favorite uh, collector's edition um, cover arts too. You guys can see that. It's just fucking amazing. It looks awesome. But yeah, that's going to do it for Pumpkinhead. I think this review has gone on long enough. So anyways, guys, once again, I just want to thank everybody for supporting the the 88 series and and if, of course if you are part of the 81 series thank you for that too um, like I said unfortunately I'm not going to continue this 52 series next year I'm going to focus on other things I'm going to try and do like a theme week you know my goal is to do one every month but if I don't it'll be once every two months so there'll be lots of reviews lots of cool themes to come and stuff like that so stay tuned for those and yeah I mean that's all I can say and once again 
Happy New Year to everybody out there. It is New Year's Eve, so, and of course, in some places, it's already New Year's, of course. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this series. I had a lot of fun with it, man, a lot of fun. Oh, something I didn't do with the 81 series, I actually always intended to do, was I was going to do it like a top 10, top 15 films of that year that I reviewed video, uh, which I will do one for 1988. I think I'm going to do like a top 15 films from 1988 uh, video just to kind of, you know, not recap the whole thing, but just kind of, you know, put together my favorite ones and whatnot. So, but yeah, anyways, guys, that's going to do it. Peace out, homies.